Well, welcome back. My name's Simon Plant, and today we're going to be in Lightroom using the radial filters to help us add impact to our images. So we're working in uh, Lightroom 5, uh, Creative Cloud, and uh, I must admit, as time goes on, the software gets better and better, and there's some functions now in Lightroom which makes it um, a more viable alternative to Photoshop. And I know a lot of people out there do use uh, Lightroom uh, and don't touch Photoshop uh, hardly at all. I'm the opposite. My main, I do use Lightroom a lot, but mainly for cataloging and archiving and a bit of processing work. But majority of my images, um, when it comes to manipulation and uh, stuff like that, retouching, I still use uh, Photoshop uh, for that. Um, but as I said, there's a lot of new functions now coming through into Lightroom that makes it a viable alternative. And we're going to look at one of these features today, which is the radial filter. So we've got an image open on screen. It's a picture I did in Greece of a fountain and this wasp appeared from nowhere and landed on the bottom of uh, the tap there to get a drink. Um, and it's a very small part of the image but it is the focal point of the image. So what we can do to help sort of draw the viewer's eye into that uh, area, we can use the radial filters to add certain adjustments. Now bear in mind that when we're manipulating images um, in Photoshop or Lightroom, the viewer's um, eye are going to get drawn to certain things, and those things um, include uh, the areas of highest contrast, areas of highest brightness, areas of high sharpness, and, uh, and, and some areas where the certain colors are, uh, are, are placed, say, for instance, red. Very strong color, and only a small amount of red to really draw your viewer's eye in. So, Having, knowing these things, we can use that to our advantage. And with the radial filters in Lightroom, it enables us to, to lay down those adjustments in a very selective way. So uh, we're going to now going to apply our first adjustment. I'm going to grab the radial uh, filter, which is the second from last um, on the screen here, and uh, just select that. And that's going to give us all these adjustments: exposure, brightness, contrast, saturation, clarity. Which is clarity, if you don't know, it's like a mid-tone contrast, and that can be very useful as well. Um, and there's also a sharpness, uh, sharpness uh, button as well there, slider. So we also can add uh, add a color wash to the image by picking out in the color picker here and that can also be useful in certain uh, certain circumstances there's also a feather feather uh, icon here slider and that means we can feather our adjustment as well which is uh, we don't want uh, an, ab an abrupt transition uh, and that can help just feather that out and just make it blend much much better we can also invert the mask and I'll take you through some of these settings in a second so let's grab a radial there and move over to the um, screen and you'll see a little crosshair you simply just click and drag and that's going to give us a radial on the screen with, uh, with these little handles these are adjustment handles and you can pull these out and change the shape of the radial uh, I'm going to keep it slightly more oval because I want to make an adjustment over the uh, over the tap here. You also notice uh, by these handles, if you move your cursor, you get this little rotate, little two arrows, which means you can rotate, uh, rotate the the um, the radial in any direction you wish to go. So that's another handy thing. And also, if you just hover over, you can just move the radial where you need on screen like so. So let's uh, have a little play around first of all. So let's ex move the exposure and see what happens. As I move the exposure, all the, as you would expect, things get brighter, but it's the outer edge of the radial that's getting brighter. Now if we want to ma manipulate, like I do here, wh what's inside the radial, we need to invert, and this is where this little checkbox comes in. If you click on that, that now makes the adjustment happen inside the radial. So I'm going to drop that exposure back down because I just did that obviously for illustration purposes. So now you know that anything you apply to uh, the uh, the radial is going to affect the outside unless you tick the invert mask box. And that will quickly come uh, obviously relevant as you make adjustments if you forget. So, so what I want to do with this image basically is to add impact and uh, really drag our viewer's eye towards the tap and the wasp. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to untick the in invert mask and I'm going to darken down, first of all, darken down the image slightly on the outer edges. So that creates a nice little hot spot 
in the middle. Very subtle, and if I turn the little toggle button off here, you can see before and after. So quite subtle. And again, don't forget, we can feather this um, this radial with the feather box to make it more or less sharp. So we want to obviously crack that up so it softens the transition nicely. So there's our first adjustment and that just darkening down the the outer edges of the image. Okay now I want to make uh, another adjustment um, right on top of this one. Um, so we could uh, go to the new button and then obviously drag another um, radial on top or if we just get this one back up if we're uh, got the radial there we could right click and there's uh, an option here to duplicate so I'm going to click duplicate that's going to add another radial right on top of our first one uh, with the same adjustment now I'm going to bring the adjustment the brightness back up to normal we've still got the other one underneath remember making this uh, this edges darker and this time I'm going to um, I'm, I'm going to actually add um, some clarity but a, a negative clarity clarity is like a mid-tone sharpener uh, which is quite useful uh, in our images but remember I want the center to be probably more sharp than the outside because that's where I want the viewers attention to go so I'm going to actually add some negative clarity uh, and bear in mind this image was shot at uh, on a, on a 2.8 lens a very sharp and a very fast lens and it gives that lovely uh, limited depth of field so it's already quite soft but I can add a bit more by dragging the clarity down now if you look carefully at the image you might be able to see uh, hopefully on the video um, that it's gone quite a bit softer if I crank it up you'll see it goes sharper and if I crank it down it's going to go softer and that again just helped focus our viewers attention on the sharper parts of the image which is the center here and now I want a bit of you uh, add a bit of adjustment to the actual uh, tap so I need to add a new radial I'm gonna make it slightly smaller this time and drag that down a little bit I'm not going to invert the mass this time because I want to add the adjustment to the inner uh, radial um, and I'm going to um, add some contrast no, I am going to invert the mass. Sorry, my mistake. See, I'll still, uh, still make a mistake myself. And I'm going to affect just the center now. And that's just, if I crank that up, you can see that's making quite a big difference. I'm going to back it off. And what you may find is you increase the contrast, just like in Photoshop, you may pick up a little bit more color as well. If you don't want that, you can drop down the saturation a little bit. I don't mind a little bit, but I don't want it to, to be too obvious. So there's the extra bit of contrast again that contrast is helping all the time um, draw the viewers eye into that area we can also if we wanted to uh, increase the clarity a little bit again be subtle you don't want to overdo it and maybe even I'm just going to increase my feather actually a little bit maybe even we can add a bit of a color wash and the color wash means that we can just add uh, a bit of warmth or whatever color you want bear in mind that cooler colors tend to recede into the picture whereas warmer colors seem to tend to come more forward and that's again can help you add uh, a feeling of depth to the picture and you notice I've already made some adjustments earlier the background to accentuate some of the colors that were there very sort of uh, cool colors so adding this warmth will again help the tap and that air uh, with the wasp uh, come forward in the picture so another useful little tip there I think you'll agree I'm just going to bring that down again I want it to be very subtle I don't want to overdo it if it's too obvious it's not going to look cool at all so I'm going to drop that down to maybe about 15% like so before after let me just close this down so we can have a better look like so and that's looking pretty good um, I'm now going to add another uh, adjustment this time we're going to come in a bit closer and try and see if we can add a bit of adjustment here on the actual wasp itself it might be a bit difficult we may have to resort to another uh, another uh, tool for that but we'll give it a go okay so let's add another uh, radial and try and do just a very small one just to, on the wasp here like so um, probably could do zoom in a little bit that's better and again um, let's add a little bit more contrast didn't invert my mask again keep getting caught out you see um, so I'm going to increase the contrast that's also picked up 
quite a bit of colour as well. And again, we don't don't mind that, but I don't want it to be too obvious. Um, maybe maybe brightening up a little bit, possibly. Give it a try. We'll have to zoom out and have a look at this. And again, I'll, I'll increase the clarity. Increase the clarity. I can't say that very well. Increase the clarity um, a little bit there. Again, I'm just really playing at this stage. Maybe pick um, a slightly warmer colour. A bit more saturation. The only trouble is it, with that is it's obviously picking up in the background as well. I don't really want that. So let's just see if I can just bring this in a bit smaller. Maybe rotate it a little bit. Like so. Bit tricky this one. May have to drop that down a bit because I think it's going to be a bit too obvious. You might actually be better off with one of the other tools here um, to try and do that. Bit tricky. Okay, so let's uh, let's come out again. Let's just zoom out. Yeah, a bit, bit obvious that. I like the contrast, but I think the colour is going to give it away a little bit. So let's see if we can come back in and just adjust that. A bit further. Like so. That's better. Okay, so we're getting there. So I just think we need to take, take, a, take stock, look at the image, and see how far we've come, and see what else we can do just to uh, finish off. So what I've done is um, I went back into that control point, uh, that radial, and I just adjusted some of the settings. I dropped down a contrast a little bit and also the uh, the brightness a little bit because it still was really kind of drawing my eye in a bit too much to the degree that it just looked fake. Um, so uh, sometimes you've got to be, be a bit more subtle with the adjustments. What I do want to do, I think now, just to finish this off, is maybe just go back in, uh, if I can, and this is going to be a bit difficult it go back to my very first radial that I did which we darken the edges of the image and I'm not sure it's gonna be a little bit tricky to find it wasn't that one anybody spot it answers on a postcard it's in here somewhere there it is hiding at the back there I think was it that one so this is where it gets a bit tricky with these is because uh, we laid that one on, on top of um, the second one on top of the first one which made it a little bit difficult there it is hiding so I'm just going to darken that down a little bit more and if I can somehow I'll try and grab the second one I might have moved that one over a little bit there it is and uh, just adjust that. So sometimes you'll find, uh, just as, as with using layers in Photoshop, you need to go back and readjust stuff um, as you move through the image. Certain things you did earlier need readjusting, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm just tweaking little bits uh, as we go. And I think that, again, that wash is probably a little bit too strong. I'm going to bring that down as well. Okay, so just to finish off, I'm just going to make a couple of global adjustments. Uh, I did these earlier before we started the tutorial, but again, now I've made these um, these radial selective adjustments, I feel like I need to go back in and just readjust some of these. And I think uh, a bit more global contrast will help this image a little bit, like so. And just maybe bring down the vibrance or the saturation, I should say, just a touch. And also, Another effect you can do is the post crop vignetting, which will help just darken those edges down that little bit further, like so. So there's our finished image, and uh, hopefully that's giving you a bit of an overview of the radial uh, radial adjustments, the selective adjustments within Lightroom. You're not going to get as much control with these as you would do going into Photoshop and doing it, but I think for an image like this, it's perfectly good enough, and uh, it just helps you just add those selective adjustments to certain parts of the image that you really want to draw the viewer's attention into. So just to show you the before picture on the left hand side here and over on the uh, right is the uh, picture that we've just finished using those uh, radial uh, filters. So you can see that's really sort of added a lot of impact towards the centre of the image which is exactly what we were looking for. So thanks for watching and I hope to catch you on the next video. Cheers.